This is the Market Anything podcast with Tim Burt. Do you enjoy our budget friendly introduction? I'd like you to meet my Italian supermodel cousin, Clarissa Burt. Ciao, ben arrivato. You know, half of this <laughs> interview is going to be in English and the other half will be in Italian. <laughs> That's not true. Welcome, cuz. That's right, cuz. Uh, for those who may not be familiar with you, Give us your backstory and let us know how this all started. You, did you wake up one day saying, I want to be a, an Italian supermodel? No, the backstory is, first of all, we are not truly cousins, everybody. That's just an inside joke. We happen to have the same last name and met through social media, which is awesome because I uh, I just got done interviewing Tim and I've got to tell you, that's the man you want to be working with right there. The answer to your question is... Um, I knew from a very early age that, you know, when I was in the kindergarten and, you know, there are a lot of kids around, I was chosen to be Miss, uh, Miss, I was chosen to be Mary Poppins, which was really kind of cool because I was on stage and in front of the microphone and I had to learn all the words for Mary Poppins and I still know most of them. And, uh, and I, so I just, you know, I really think I was hooked from that, that moment when I got on stage and I had no fear and, and I just, you know, I entertained and it was great. And then it took a while for me to get back in front of the camera afterward. Oh, so as I was a child, it was the um, movies that I would watch that had Abba Gardner in them or, uh, or Rita Hayworth. So Abba Gardner and Rita Hayworth were my absolute two go-to women. I wanted to be them. I wanted to look like them. I wanted to dance like them. I wanted to dress like them. And those were, that was, those were kind of my icons. They were the, the, woman, the women that I looked up to. Uh, and then uh, it took a while, you know, for me to really, to really engage, if you will, in what I wanted to do. So I was in, New, uh, in Jersey at the time. And I started to live in New York when I was 19. And that's when I started to, people started to say, yeah, you really should be a model really, really sure. And I was like, nah, I could never, you know, I just, I could never, you know, it's a dream, but I could never. Uh, and uh, less self-esteem, I think, had a lot, or a lack of it, had a lot to do with that. But anyway, long story, even longer, is that I did it. I went to the agencies, I got the pictures taken, and I was taken, I was accepted, and, uh, and the rest is really, is really, goes from there. And that was 1980. It took me until 1981 to get to Paris, and then 1983 to get to Milan. And that's where the, the story begins, really. I just, you know, and there was no internet then. There were no cell phones then. You had a portfolio, which was a hard copy binder book that you put your, your pictures in. And, uh, and you started with a map and the metro system or the subway. And that's how you got around town. And, um, and everything slowly built from there. So from the modeling years, I moved into the movie years. Um, and behind me, if you can see, that's the poster for the Never Ending Story Part Two, where I was the me is Aida, the mean queen that stole the child's memories. And um, uh, so television followed that, and uh, I, in Italy, because now I'm in Italy, I'm still in Italy. And so I learned the language, got myself onto Italian television, and the rest, as they say, is history. Because I learned, I did everything live. Pretty much every television show I ever did was live and in another language. So to a large degree, you were marketing yourself. I mean, you had to prove to these agencies and people that wanted to hire you for the job that, yeah, you were the, the right woman at the right time. Yeah, well, first of all, you know, the first part, the first bit is always learning how to do the job because it's, you know, uh, the, the first, the first runways weren't the easiest. You know, there were some wobbly knees, the first couple of runways out and learning how to do the makeup and learning the proper, you know, lighting and the proper way to, you know, to wear each garment because each one needs to be worn differently to be shown in the best light. There's a lot that goes into really good, proper, you know, intelligent modeling that um, then the meets the eye. It's not as easy as it looks. Uh, but um, I'll never forget the one time it was, I was in January, Normandy Beach, right off of France. And they had me in a bathing suit in the water uh, with, uh, as I was, and they had this huge, long telephoto lens, you know, that's how far out into the water I was. And, uh, and the next thing you know, I mean, it was so cold, Tim. It was so ungodly cold that um, I got sick. I was sick as a dog for about a month after that. It was brutal. And it was for, a I think it was for a cream line or a cellulite line. I don't know what the heck it was for. I was, you know, 20, so I didn't have any cellulite. But it was just the, the, the idea, you know, you know, selling this cream and having to come out like this voluptuous vixen out of the water and looking so gorgeous. And I was freezing. It was so cold and you know these are the things that happen to you along the way that you remember because it was so you know it's so burned into your brain memory cells 
because it was so painful. But, you know, modeling isn't always, you know, what it's, what it's cracked up to be. The, the, the career went really well. I mean, I have to say that it was, it was one of the things that I think um, I, I wanted to do that I, I wanted to do in a big way. And I think, yeah, and I did. And I did, which is great. But that, you know, was then. And then there were other iterations. I acted for a while. And then I worked on television for a while. And then I produced television. So I think my largest television production was the Miss Universe pageant in Italy, where I had a three-hour live broadcast, 18 camera, 2,000 no, 2, people sitting in water in front of a castle in Calabria. 2,000 people sitting in water in front of a castle in Calabria. And I was 40, I think it was about 40 then. And um, 40, yeah, it was about 42, three, something like that. And that was, that was when I had yet another anaphylactic shock in life, right before I went out again on live television, due to the gluten, which is the book behind me, you know, the Italian gluten-free gastronomy cookbook, because, you know, I, I found out the hard way that I can't eat gluten. And, uh, and I guess I had had some gluten that night and the next day, the adrenaline and all the rest of it, boom, I had a full on anaphylactic shock and all of the EMTs are running behind the stage and they shot me up in my arm right here with cortisone. There was a doctor in the house and they short my, <laughs> my vein with cortisone. So, whew, okay, she's back. She's not dead. Head. she could come out on the next set so anyway we're standing there and i'm waiting for the doors you can see it on my website you wait for these doors to open and i sumptuously come down the steps or whatever the heck the word is and i'm you know in all my glory and three 30 seconds before that there was blood trickling down my arm as i stood there and tried to compose and, and i and i went over the back railing and i went get this off of me because you have assistants and makeup artists and whatever else around you before on live television at all times and so that's, that's another thing that was burned in the memory because I'll never forget that night either. You know, it's, it's, it's just the pursuit of the passion. It's what doing what you love to do, which is really number one. I know yours is too. That microphone, you'd be, you'd be a dead man if they took that thing away from you tomorrow. You know, you just would. Oh no, I, I have others. Oh, <laughs> very good. I didn't mean that. Listen, I have some too. Okay. Um, but, you know, um, you know, I, I just, I don't know what I would do if it wasn't media because it's what I, I just live it. I love it. I sleep it. And I, and I, and I, um, I, I just, I love the medium. It's, it, you know, and we had it when, 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 uh, when uh, you were on my uh, podcast uh, not too long ago, we, we had the conversation about all the changes that have taken place as it, as it always does, right? There are always going to be changes. The changes have been so fast and furious over the last 20 years. Um, and we've seen them all come and go, right? Some of the right, stuff is right, right. not, we don't even, you know, like the Encyclopedia Britannica is gone. And, you know. <laughs> I would say anybody that got into media after, Oh, 2000 to 2005, somewhere around, maybe even a little earlier. They didn't know, they didn't have to go through what we went through with the splicing of, the, of tape and, and the razor blades and cutting the tape and putting it on the wall and all that stuff. And, okay. and, and the parties. At the parties. I'm talking about the work, you know. <laughs> Tell us, how many magazine covers have you been on? About 250. Vogue and Harper's Bazaar and Cosmopolitan, they're, they're, they're not around. I don't keep that much stuff out anymore. It's, they're all, it's all in the closet, but there's a lot, you know, between the modeling, um, the modeling covers, the ones that went out of country as well, which by the way, back in the day, we had no way of getting our hands on. So if a, if a magazine cover, they use the same Cosmopolitan in Italy as they used in Germany, we had no way of getting it. There was no digital. There was no internet. It would go out onto the newsstand in Germany. It was out for that month. And if you missed it, oh, well, you know, so, um, so between that and the television, um, the television uh, covers and, you know, different um, ads that I did and, you know, they're around, some they're all around my beauty campaigns and that sort of thing. It's about 250 covers all told. And then, um, then I just came out, you know, my, my magazine, the In the Limelight magazine, I was on the front, the first cover because it was you know, coming out with the first cover. What's your favorite photo taken of you ever? Can you show it to us? It's, it's a picture, this one. I don't know. It's that one. See that one right up there? The, yeah. 
Yeah, the one in the middle. It was taken by, it was taken for the Orlane campaign. And I'm sorry, I, my computer won't move any farther than that, so I can show you more closely. But that was taken, I was about 26 years old there, and it was taken for the Orlane campaign, which is a cosmetics uh, uh, company in Paris, and it's a worldwide uh, brand. Um, and it was taken by Bob Krieger, who was an absolutely amazing, is an amazing um, uh, beauty photographer and he said to me the if I can I brag a second do you mind because this guy is and I worked with Scavulo I've worked with the best but Bob happened to be he was he lived in Milan and he was really just an extraordinary photographer and he just captured the essence every time I loved working with him and he said and he's done I can't even tell you the amount of work that this this gentleman has done and he said to me the the most beautiful beauty I ever did was with you and that is the picture he's referring to, is that one right there in the middle. Yeah, which is very kind. I shouldn't say that. You know, it's not nice for me to say things like that. But those are the, they're the mini crowning you know, moments when a photographer says that. And he used to look through the, the lens and say, you look just like um, Elizabeth Taylor. Now, you have to remember, these are years ago. These are pounds ago. These are, you know, this is the 25-year-old me. So I don't want everybody to go, what the hell is she talking about? There were, you know, I mean, <laughs> there were moments that, you know, I was younger and thinner and things, you know, that your face does change and morph as you age. So talk about some of the projects you're working on right now. I mean, really, really big stuff that you've got cooking. Yeah. Well, apart from in the limelight media, which is new to me, you know, for me, I started it up six months ago and I always said I wanted to do a multimedia platform. Uh, in very tongue in cheek, I will say uh, Oprah, Martha, Clarissa, because we have multimedia platforms, which are consist of a television, radio, and a magazine. Well, in our case now it's video podcast and a magazine plus the social and all the rest of the things that go along with it, like newsletters and the like. I've wanted to do this for a while and now I'm doing doing it, loving it, and, and, and pulling this all together. But there are always side <laughs> things going on where I like to connect people uh, that I know. Uh, last week I was out to L.A., met with Doug Ivanovich. If you remember Live Aid Band-Aid, those kind of things. This is the gentleman that heads those up. He produces those events with Bob Geldorf, uh, uh, you'll remember. So he's doing something now called Earth Day 50 Live, and he's pulling together all the, country, all the cities around the, uh, the world to uh, participate in an event that is geared toward uh, um, – this saving the planet and uh, bringing awareness to how we might all be able to, you know, be treating this planet a lot better. Um, and so I'm very excited just to be able to make some, you know, connections uh, for that. Uh, that's really very, very cool. I was supposed to be out on Saturday night to Temecula. I live in Phoenix, so I can't be in LA every two seconds. I just can't do that. But um, I'm also a part of another, uh, something else happening with Cool and the Gang. You'll remember, celebrate good in ladies' night. And it feels all right. <laughs> oh, yeah, cool and the gang. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you and I won't remember that. I don't know if our younger ladies' like, night and the feelings, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, remember, I've got a 25 year background in radio. I had to play cool and the gang many, many times. Right. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So we've got, <laughs> so I'm working, I'm collaborating on something with Cool and the Gang, and it has to do with, you know, the tours and, and you know, giving back. And, um, and I think there's a champagne company involved as well. So that's kind of fun. Tell us about the Wishman. This is really cool. Wishman movie. Let's not forget. Wishman movie, uh, a guy by the name of Frank Shankwitz started up the Make-A-Wish Foundation around his kitchen table in Prescott, Arizona in 1980. He came to find that there was a young gentleman, a young boy by about 10 years old, by the name of Chris, who absolutely adored the television show Chips. Now, Frank Shankwitz was a um, was a, um, a state trooper, a motorcycle state trooper, and so this young ch child wanted to be just like Chips. You remember the motorcycle cops, and he, and so they they went to Frank and said, "Can you make this?" child's wish come true and the wish was that he too before passing would become uh, a, a full-fledged you know badge and all uh, state trooper and that's what Frank made happen so I, I met Frank 10 years ago at an event in Prescott Arizona and I said uh, he, you know, he had a big hat and the belt and the boots and he's he is the John Wayne of today the guy is big and burly and lovely 
And so I, uh, I, I, uh, I said, what do you do? And he told me, and I said, okay, you have to meet some people. So I took him out um, to a, a networking event that I, I, I was a part of called Secret Knock. And, uh, and that's where it happened. Greg Reed made the, you know, made the movie for him and produced it. It went on, it's on Netflix right now, everybody. So you want to watch Wish Man on Netflix. It's a little bit of a tearjerker, so pull some tissue out. And we did get an Oscar nod, which was very exciting. We did not, you know, we didn't make the grade, but it's always kind of nice to be, to be recognized for. That's all right. That's all right. You're in the company. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I'll be heading out now to Italy for another event and uh, for another movie that I'm co-producing. And I will also, I've got a little piece of, you know, a little, I mean, I mean, I'm also in the Wishman movie, but you'd never know it. It's very quick. It's <laughs> in and out. Uh, but I, I love the, you know, I just love, I, I love a movie set, but my real passion is live TV. You know, my, my real passion is, is this. And if it can be live, it's, it's, it's the icing on the cake. I just love it. Yeah, I love live. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I've done live TV uh, a number of times. And uh, honestly, it I find it terrifying. And a lot of people, I was I would assume they get on live TV once and then they're like, I ain't never doing this again because it's just too much. Like jumping out of an airplane. It's like when I jumped out of an airplane, I'll never do it again. You asked me about what's happening now. So I told you about in the limelight. I'm really proud of the left. Uh, publication that came out. This is in the limelight. All right. So who's that on the cover there? This is intelligent media for the savvy entrepreneur. These are the Lamborghinis. They are friends of mine. So Tonino Lamborghini is the son of the original Ferruccio Lamborghini, who is the one we all will remember from, from the cars. And this is his son, Ferruccio Jr. So Tonino and Ferruccio are now running uh, the Tonino Lamborghini brand all over the world. Uh, they are uh, different. Uh, there's a lot of different uh, merchandising pieces and the Lamborghini hotels that are going up around the world. Really? Now, I've never heard of the Lamborghini hotels. I have to check this out. If you Google Lamborghini Hotel Dubai, uh, the Lamborghini hotels are, and they're gorgeous, obviously, but it, ju it just do yourself the favor and Google Lamborghini Hotel Dubai, everybody, and take a look at the kind of things that they're, that they're doing. Pretty spectacular. Yeah, I saw one of these motivational things on, uh, on Facebook and it's some business group or whatever. And it said, um, it said, you know why you've never seen a Lamborghini commercial? Because people that drive Lamborghinis don't watch TV. I have heard that before. You've heard of that? I have okay. Yeah. It's new to me. That's, that's fine. Yeah. Oh yeah. I've heard that before, Isn't that, but it's so true. Yeah. In the limelight, where can people find out more about in the limelight? In the limelight media.com, Clarissa Burke.com. I'll take you to the same place. All right. In the limelight media.com. And with you being in startup phase with in the limelight, what do you consider your biggest challenge right now? Time. Time is the biggest challenge. Um, I, you know, I, I, uh, I've got focus then, you know, that's, that's, <laughs> It's already a you know milestone uh, because I am sort of you know I'm squirrel and uh, I am ADD and probably ADHD and any other letter we want to throw in there that's fine too and um, uh, it's time because the 15 to 18 hours a day that I'm, I've been putting in for a very long time don't seem to be enough um, there's it's the learning curves the courses the classes the networking groups the networking events the creation of relationships that uh, that take the time that they take and each one of them need is a full-time job so you have to or at least i've found that i've had to uh really uh be very mindful much more mindful about the, where my time how i'm spending my time where it's going and how it's going and then um i have been able to pull together as much as I can pull together by myself, the logos and the website and the branding and the text and all, you know, as much as I possibly can so that I can hand it off to somebody like Tim Burt who knows exactly, you know, how to, how to really, you know, well oil the machine and get it real tight and compact. I've got it. I've got, you know, this kind of view now and, and it's, but now I need somebody that's just going to go, boom, it landed. We get it. People get it. Yeah. 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 You got to hone it in. Yeah. Is there anything, Clarissa, that you took away from your modeling career that you've been able to transfer over to in the limelight in your entrepreneurial startup? For sure. Aesthetics. Um, and the show must go on because, because the, these are, this is live timing and live television doesn't wait for you and the show when it starts doesn't wait for you so one thing is always that for, oh, i live by anyway is always to be on time and be respectful about other other people's time get there early 
earlier than you think you need to be there, you need to be there because there's always going to be a glitch or a hiccup or a traffic jam or whatever. And you always need to be the, remembered as the one that got the job done really well because you were so professional. The other thing that I learned was there are so many people that you work with because on any given day you work with a whole new team of people, new photographers, new makeup artists, new hair guy, new lighting people, new, new you know, client. There's always a new team of people around. So knowing how to deal with all the different personalities and making everybody happy at the end of the day, uh, which I wasn't always perfect at because if you annoyed me, I might let you know. But uh, there was always, you know, the, the ever changing personality, uh, conundrum that you had to deal with also. So I found that there are very, there are few things that you can, that you can throw at someone that is constantly working with different uh, personality types that is always working live because you know, I'm working live right now. This might go in deferred. This might go on in a second moment, but right now I'm live. My lighting is set. My hair, hair make all the stuff that had to be done was that the background is done. Everything was ready before I stepped up. And I was here long before I needed to be here. Maybe long before it's five or 10 minutes. But when you're sitting there and somebody shows up, it just, it just bodes well. It really looks good. You know, professionalism just seems to be a thing of the past. It's a word that we've heard, but it's really, it's, it's a mindset and it's what is going to move you forward. It's going to move your business forward. It's going to move your brand forward. Yeah, that is great advice. Uh, what do you, as someone who is a former, I know you hate the S word supermodel, but as someone who is a former supermodel, what do you think of the state of the modeling industry today? Well, I don't hate the word supermodel per se. I just don't want to be considered at 61 years old a supermodel anymore. It's part of who I was. It's part of what I did. And I absolutely loved it. I have nothing against the, the industry at all. Uh, in fact, in many ways, it's gotten better. Uh, in my day, there was no water behind stage. There, was no, there were no snacks. There was no food. It was cold. It was damp. It was dank. There were a lot of things that have gotten much better because there are now model unions that are starting to take care of the behind the scenes, make sure that the girls... There's also the... Um, the um, uh, betterment, if you will, of the fact that a lot of clients and magazines won't take girls that are under a certain age and they won't take girls anymore that are under a certain poundage, which are a certain weight, which I think is a fabulous step forward. As far as the modeling industry is concerned, those are, that's what I think is really a great thing. What is different now is social media. What is different now is uh, everybody thinks that they're nobody unless they have numbers and analytics and huge followings. And that's all well and good. But I'll tell you, just like anything else, nothing lasts forever. And, you know, you have to make peace with yourself and your maker for those who believe in makers. I mean, it just doesn't happen in my world that I'm not a selfie. I don't think I've ever taken a selfie in my life. I don't think I ever will. It's just not what I do. It's not what I like. I may have, you know, in very dire or special uh, situations, will I ever do that? It's just not what I do. I, I feel as though there's, there's way too much emphasis put on the fact that your numbers make you the, it's like, it's like you're nobody if you're not on television. You're nobody anymore. Well, that's not true. I still am somebody. My name is still Clarissa. I'm not on TV this season. It doesn't make me any less Clarissa. My history doesn't change. My person doesn't change. You know, you know, it does, nothing has changed except that box. And so remember that there are so many other things that you can be doing that are of great value and great importance that have nothing to do with the television, a radio, a podcast, or a social media number. So I think, you know, the other thing, and Tim, and, I'll, and then I'll close with that, is, is we're showing way too much showing way too much and I'm and I'm talking to girls now who think that they have no value unless they're sending pictures that are questionable at best yeah at best and and I and I don't understand why this has become such a thing because there's not a damn thing classy about it and there's nothing well, it's lowest common it. denominator and I'll tell you this I will tell you this he will always want to marry a lady.
He's always going to want to marry the girl he can take home to his mother, not the girl he can take home. Wow, that is some sage advice right there. And I'm not, and I'm not saying, look, I'm not here, I'm not here to preach and let you know, predicate. I'm not preaching. I'm saying, you know, from the days of, I'm going to go back to Adam Eve because I was there. I was in the garden. Um, I'm going to tell you that there is nothing ever that that is as revered and and as and as appreciated as a lady a lady class and elegance will get you so much farther in life in business socially i mean there's just you know ladies that women that are uh giving it all away um are are doing just that they're giving it all away they have very little self-esteem. And I, you know, my book is called The Self-Esteem Regime, right? So this book that is, I'm writing now in the moment is called The Self-Esteem Regime. So I, you know, I talk about my four pillars, which are look good, feel good, be good, and greater good. And what that really, what I'm teaching women is the importance of good, happy, healthy self-esteem self -esteem, and how to live as an esteemed being. And by taking pictures of your boobs or your coochie or whatever the hell they're sending pictures of, I don't know. Um, uh, and sending it to gentlemen and people that you hardly even know. First of all, if he's worth his weight in gold, he's not going to be okay with that. He'll play with you for a little while, but that's about it. So, yeah. Look, I know you're very busy and want to thank you for taking your time uh, to chat with us here today. And where do you think that, uh, where, where would you like to see in the limelight in the next three to five years? Three to five years, I'd like to see it as a global concern. I'd like to see it, you know, obviously digitally, but as a global concern with it being a network and not just the name of a show. So a network of, uh, of women, mostly women, that are coming in from all different countries around the world. So I'd like to have a pre at least one presence in every country uh, that create their own uh, shows underneath the In the Limelight umbrella. So, yeah. And, and by the way, I say one, there are certainly many, you know, as many women as I can get in, in any country would be fine. But I would like this to be the one stop shop for everything intelligent media for women. I think that women, uh, we can be here all day about, you know, the position and condition of women in media and how, um, how skewed it is and how wrong it is and how um, the women are not being portrayed uh, in, in the proper light. So I, I want to be, uh, one of the, uh, crusaders, if you will, to have intelligent, intelligent media for women, you know, it opens up conversations and that educates, it entertains, but it educates. Um, and, uh, it's where we encounter one another, we engage with one another and we encourage one another. How about substance with some style? Hmm? In the limelightmedia.com, and I'm sure people can find all your books and everything right there. The cookbook you can find on Amazon for sure. You can go to Clarissa, uh, you can go to clarissabert.com, which is in the media, in the limelightmedia.com, and you'll find products are there as well. And uh, the, uh, the self esteem regime is still at the publishers. So as soon as that comes out, I'll let you know. Well, we are looking forward to it. Thank you so much, Clarissa, for your time today. Hey, and it's uh, been a pleasure, really. You know that. Thanks so much to you. Well, cuz we gotta be somehow, somewhere. Else. My cousin from another dozen. <laughs> another. I don't know what that means. I just made it up, but it, <laughs> it kind of works. <laughs> but it works so perfectly because that's probably right. You know, my cousin from another dozen. Love that. I'll have to. We are looking forward to seeing everything that uh, you come up with for in the limelight media and in the limelightmedia.com. Clarissa, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks. Thanks, Tim.